Hey there, today on Tom's Tech Show we're covering uh, the CVE database and why you should use it and how you should use it and why you should bookmark it and follow it and all that stuff. Here we go. Hey there, this is Tom's Tom Tech Show and one of the sites that uh, I go to all the time and I think every IT person needs to be really in touch with, especially if you're dealing with security, um, is the CVE database, right? The common vulnerabilities, exposures. Um, they're always listening new. There's, you can need to really follow them on, on Twitter. There's CVE announcements, uh, CVE new, which lists all of the new vulnerabilities that are out there. But just to keep, you know, keep in touch with what's going on, what major vulnerabilities there might be. Um, that are out there. I mean, not all of these are going to apply to you. Uh, probably fairly few might apply to you, but when something that does apply to you, you need to know what it is and how to act on it and what you need to do. Um, like, for instance, this is the, the CVE 2019-0708. This is the remote code execution vulnerability exists for remote desktop um, that allows people to connect your remote desktops and get into systems and potentially crash uh, your systems. So here it is. Uh, it gives a good description of, of what it is. And then down here, there's a lot of data. So like the, uh, let's see, the Huawei link here shows actually a con construct of how to do it. I think this is in, might be in Python, um, but allows you to even take this code here and run it and push it against your systems and see if it will crash. I mean, and this is what people are going to be taking and putting out on the internet and trying to crash your remote desktop systems if you happen to have one on the internet. So it also is listing here um, the Microsoft Remote Desktop Denial of Service link from Microsoft, which allows you to come here and see these are all the patches that you need. So if you're maintaining control of patches in, in your environment and you need to know which ones we need to put on just to specifically mitigate this vulnerability, we can come here, look through these patches. Okay, I've got a, you know, a server 2016 and I need this patch to be applied. There's a link here to go get the patch and, and download it and put it on that server. So you can... Put this, put this one like to the front of your list of what patches you need to apply and it helps you to do that. And the hard part really is getting your servers patched like in, in AWS and Azure, uh, things like that where you have customers, you know, maybe connecting to the systems all the time. Make sure you get your next, uh, you know, maintenance window that you set up, which you should have, you know, at least a monthly maintenance window so you can apply all these patches and get everything you know secure in your service. The other option of course if you have servers that are that are in-house that are on on the internet is to take those systems off the internet and provide a VPN connection into your your lab or whatever production environment that you have instead of putting anything right on the internet. So which I typically try to make sure and, and do make sure everybody's VPNing in because your VPN connection, if you have like a Cisco ASA, you can set up a uh, two factor. So you can filter on Mac address, give them two factor, link it to a security group. So you have multiple different uh, factors, multiple different methods that need to be, you know, identity pieces that need to be matched for them to get into the system to remote desktop into you know, a server or something, a, a desktop system or whatever it would be inside. Uh, they do still have patches here for Windows 7, which is amazing because that's going to be, you know, going out of uh, service at all, I think, in January. They're going to drop. That's when that drops. So need to start looking at migrating off of those Windows 7 boxes. Um, and if you're going to do that, basically make sure to skip Windows 8 and go right to Windows 10. I do have a video on Windows 10 LTSC, which is probably the best. Uh, if you have a big enough environment, you can get uh, an activation key to be able to activate 
uh, Windows 10 LTSC in your network, and that's doesn't have doesn't put Candy Crush on all of your users' PCs, but um, but definitely get to know the CVE database. Um, you can search it for different vulnerabilities. Uh, like if I want to search for you know RDP vulnerabilities, here they are. There's a ton of them. Uh, or if you have another uh, type of system, uh, like uh, like something Cisco, um, here's a bunch of Cisco ones. So you know, like if I have Cisco switches or my Cisco ASA router, then I know, okay, anything that's coming out that I see that's a CVE, I can go to Cisco, okay, I need to update this. I can put that on the top of my update list and use kind of this to help drive what updates you're doing in your priorities. Uh, because things with known vulnerabilities that may be coming, you know, to a device that you have, then will help you steer you to, you know, what you need to uh, to update. There are several other update sites and everything out there. You can share yours for everybody else down below. Uh, but this is one of the main ones that I use and go to all the time. Just gives you a little map here on the front to see where a lot of vulnerabilities and attacks are going on. Just pretty good to to keep aware of this. Even if you're not the guy in charge of security, constantly seeing, watching this, and just putting it in your Twitter feed helps see, okay, what was that? Okay, I don't have that device. What's this? Oh, okay, I don't have that device. You know, well, wait, that one, that tweet, you know, that has this device in it, I have that, so then I need to go and, and find out what's going on. Right. Okay. So that's that's what I do. That's one of the main things that I do on... Uh, a weekly basis is you have to go through, scan what vulnerabilities are out there, what systems need updated, is there anything critical? And the CVE database definitely is a place that I use to help drive that and help put what devices I need at the front of my list. All right, well, hopefully that helps you and go and bookmark it, follow them on Twitter uh, so that you get all those all the time. All right, well, there you go. Uh, Thanks for watching this one and like, share and subscribe if it helps you out and uh, take care.